Ready? Yeah. We're doing it? We're doing it. Got him. Cheers. Enjoy your limited edition crazy beer. It's not limited. It's just, uh, can't get it anywhere else but Missoula, Montana. That's pretty limited. Well, I'm sure you can get it in other places in Montana, but who goes there? Nobody goes to Montana. My hometown. Uh, so yeah, I am drinking a cold smoke scotch ale by Kettle House Brewing Company, located in my hometown, Missoula, Montana. Incredible. Every time I go back and visit it, I make sure to bring back as much as possible. And since this is Christmas Day, I got some for Christmas as a present. So It's pretty delicious. Hallelujah. But my stomach feels like it's fucked, so I don't want to waste your beer. Fair enough. So I'm instead drinking a Ballast Point Grapefruit Sculpin. You almost good. blocked my face for a I second. I know. I was like, oh, I'm going to move this. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Um, the grapefruit? The grapefruit one. You really you want to taste it? Yeah, go for it. I haven't had it in a long time. You want to taste this? Yeah. It's not as bad as I remember. I actually didn't hate it this time. Maybe you had a bad batch. Yeah, because there was a, for context, back, like, what was it, like, three or four years ago? Mm -hmm. When I still DJ'd. Um, I went and DJ'd a house party, and someone replaced my beer with that and said, here, try this. You know, it was the worst thing I ever tasted. <laughs> I, Just The awful. thing is, is I think it might have been the worst beer you ever had. Sorry about all this awful noise, but this thing's falling off. Um, yeah, because I had to end up doing, like, chasers of Malibu stuff. And none of my friends wanted it. They all tasted it and they're like, oh, I don't want it. It might have been also really bad because you really wanted your beer. Not I didn't some... really want my beer. I was just had, oh. I just had a gener generic like shit beer. Oh, yeah. Gross. Yeah. Are there yeah any, much better this time. Are there any good generic shit beers? Um, Coors Light is not bad. Coors Light's just and water. Rolling Rock is not bad. Rolling Rock is, is okay. It's... Both of them are basically water. Rolling Rock is not, like skunky they water. They don't taste bad. They yeah, just kind of taste. If that makes sense. Yeah, mm. I don't know. I can't think of a, a good mainstream brand beer. I mean, Blue Moon. I was going to say, yeah, Blue Moon. And um, Anheuser-Busch owns Kilt Lifter now. Shock Top. Shock Top. They're That's not bad. Good. I don't know. There's anyway. shit out there. You can get it. There's shit out there. But I still recommend supporting these smaller breweries. Yeah, like... Like a kettle house. Go there if you live in Montana. Yeah. Well, I mean, Ballast Point's not a small brewery, but... They used to be. They used to be, and then... Uh, Didn't they get bought? They got bought by Constellations, which is unfortunate. This is a big, fucking, massive thing. So, huh. I, I got this for free. So yeah. Nice. Anyway. Anyway. Hello. Welcome to Fantavision. My name is Fanta. I'm joined with... Steven, SBS, whatever you want to call me. Indeed. And today, we're going to be discussing your time as a cart crew person, because neither Eric or I have any experience in that. We've just seen the awfulness that is cart crew, and seen the carts scattered all over <laughs> the parking lot, seen them, like, upside down sometimes for some reason. You don't know how that happened. You see them sandwiched in between cars. You see them on the curb. You see them down the road. They're everywhere. Yeah. And it'll be a fresh perspective, a new, completely new topic that none of us have ever covered before. Yeah. And I think I think a lot of people are probably wondering what it's like. Yeah. I'm, I kind of am. I, I worked there for just under a year, about 11 months. And uh, so probably get along to talking about a few topics today and then maybe more in the future I, I don't see us being able to cover everything in one little session wow okay yeah because like it's pretty it's interesting every every day was new because instead of doing like the same monotonous task which you do picking up carts you, you're dealing with traffic and weather conditions and management and just different elements. managers and stuff that's it's just kind of, it's the same company, but like a different job. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. Um, 
First thing that comes to mind, if you don't mind me getting like right to it, go for it, man. That's uh, what people really want. That's why they put those time codes. Yeah, dude. We uh, so <laughs> <laughs> um, so we live in Arizona. Yeah. Um, very hot during the summer. It's a dry heat, but still. That's hot. what we love to say. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Isn't it hell there?" Well, it's a dry heat. So and it's not like Florida armpit weather yeah. where you feel like you're dying. You can go inside, and if you go into shade or air conditioning, it's really not that bad. It's not that bad. But if you're in direct sunlight, it's or in Phoenix, it's like a burning hellscape on yeah. your skin, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm a geologist now, so I'm pretty used to being outside, but not into the extent that I was at Walmart, where they give you a reflective shirt. Two of them, actually. They gave me those. And then they charged me $28 for them. Um, I talked to the other cart crew guys, what? and they got theirs for free. But they took it out of my pay stub, my, out of my paycheck on my first one. I had what? no choice in this. They just gave me cart crew shirts. It says cart crew on the back, Walmart on the front. And um... Wait a minute. <laughs> Why did you get charged and they didn't? Um, they said it had something to do with whoever was on duty that day just gave it to him without charging him what the fuck i don't know man it was my first job yeah also it was my first job yeah so i didn't really know what to expect i didn't know what to complain about or whatever yeah um but yeah so i start just before winter i think and we'll get to like black friday and stuff on another time but i want to talk about summer okay once it gets into that hot blazing hellscape of Dealing with the sun, not just directly on your skin, but radiating off of the asphalt. Yeah. And I never really realized it until about, like, a couple weeks into, you know, the 100 degree weather weeks. And I would go inside, because, you know, we at, when, when it started getting hot, we'd go inside and kind of, like, walk through the air conditioning for a little bit. Sometimes we'd even go into, like, the, the, like the, da- the dairy freezer. <laughs> Um, just to cool off yeah i don't blame you man and you're not supposed to do that actually you're not supposed to give yourself extreme changes in temperature Mm. on a short-term basis whatever yeah but yeah so we go inside and i'd be walking and then i feel my shoes sticking to the to the tile in walmart and i realized after like a couple weeks that that was happening because my the rubber of my shoes was melting to the ground when I was working oh in the cart crew. Oh my god! Yeah, because everything on the on the asphalt is about ten to fifteen degrees hotter than you know what's coming down. How do you survive a whole shift where you're outside in that shit? Um, well, there was McDonald's, and so I would go and get the one dollar large soda, and there would Just... also be free Gatorade that they gave us that we could go and get free refills on that all the time. But we all we always had a drink, just kind of like sitting in our little corner, like our little degenerate corner that people didn't venture <laughs> into. Degenerate corner. Yeah, because so you would you'd go around and you'd do like a round of carts, and if it was early in the morning, it was usually like maybe twenty minutes to an hour, depending on how busy it was and what time the cart crew guy got off at the night shift. Mm-hmm. So you go through your first shift and you're like, or through your first run, it's like seven a.m. And you get back there, and you're like, okay, you're in your corner. Nothing to do, because there's no one coming to the store. See, so there's, like, a garage door yeah. where you can close it off. And so no one can see see you if the garage door is closed. And there's also a wall and some pillars hanging out there. So you just kind of go and sit in the corner between the garage door and the walls. I've seen so many people do and that. And I've slept there. <laughs> um, <laughs> ever, other people have. It's... It's just kind of like, there's nothing to do, so you just kind of hang out there. What's the longest That's... amount of time you've slept? Oh, maybe like 10, 15 minutes max. Oh, okay. That'd like, be funny if you like, oh, like you did your one breaks. round, <laughs> and then like went back there, fell asleep, and then woke up at the end of your shift. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, that's... Because they always had a radio on you, so you kind of always had to have it, like, ready. Because they knew that we took breaks, and they actually encouraged it, especially during uh, summer, because it's like... If something happened to you, you had, like, heat stroke or something, just they're liable. Yeah, you just so, see. summer was kind of, like, the most lenient time for us, even though it kind of sucked weather-wise. Yeah. Because they let you have more breaks, more time Remember to, like, you to yourself. Remember hanging out GameStop a lot. Oh, yeah. I came, I came over to GameStop when you were working there, and it's yeah. like, they didn't really question it, because as long as the car- parking lot looked good, 
they couldn't like you know they couldn't say, they go back yell? out there. Yeah. What are they gonna yell at you for? Nothing, because if they yell at you and you go back out there and you have heat stroke or some other like heat stress related illness, then they're in some big trouble. Yeah. So, yeah, we just kind of hang out in that corner and then go like usually we do like twenty minutes off, an hour on during the busy times, and then if it wasn't busy like in the mornings, we kind of hang out for about an hour or so and then go back out there and it was normal like an hour to clear it again. Um, and in, be, in, be, in that time, you still had to have your radio on, right? Because they did these things called carryouts, which for, yeah. some, for some reason, the people who are working the carts outside, even though it'd be really busy sometimes, would have to stop what they're doing, stop cleaning the parking lot, even during like the holiday seasons, and go inside and help take someone's like TV or whatever or groceries from their from the register to their car, help them lift it in, which is fine. Which but we did a lot in electronics as well. Yeah, we, uh, when I moved into electronics, I did it a lot. I volunteered, and so did the other electronics people, because we knew that it sucked for the car crew people yeah. to come all the way across like the very far corners of the parking lot to inside. Because yeah, if I mean, they called you when, while you were clearing the lot, it was a nightmare. Yeah, to most of the time, it. car crew wouldn't show up if we needed their help and we're super busy in electronics. Well, then so were they. <laughs> Pre-order guy and whoever else was working that day. Said, oh yeah, <laughs> should oh, I pre-order yeah. the? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, so he wouldn't show up and nor were the other people because it was just so yeah, busy. Because if you think about it, it's busy in electronics, which means it's, it's, it's busy, busy in the in the yeah. parking lot. So. It's just this insane congestion <laughs> problem. And yeah, so they had the wrong people doing it. Yeah, but. So once I moved into electronics, you know, I tried to do my best to take it out myself, not call them, not deal with it. But yeah, it was it was weird, man. It was like a weird job out there. And speaking of carryouts, one of the things that actually will stay with me forever is I had this one uh, mother son couple of people. Wait, what it was a mother son? Well, not couple? like a not like a romantic couple, but like okay. two people came in. And they were both on the electric uh, scooter carts. Yeah. And s- some sort of disability. Couldn't handle it themselves. Whatever. That's fine. But so I go in for the carry out and it's their groceries and walk it out with them. You know, they're scooting along and we get to their van, which is in the handicapped spot. And, you know, everything's fine. It's pretty normal. But they wanted their groceries seat belted into the seats. It's like, okay, you don't want them falling around. Yeah, that's that makes fine. Sense. But we open the door. And there was, like, they they said these words as I got in there. Like, sorry about the smell. We got some chicken in there that has been sitting for, like, a week that they just found. And it was, like, nauseating. How does that even happen? Well, they're handicapped. They have some sort of disability. They probably just didn't, like, maybe it uh... fell under the seat or something. I don't know. But it was nauseating. Like, I was ready to throw up, and I had to unload all of their stuff into the car. How do they drive around like that? I don't know, man. I couldn't... Like, so once I got all that stuff out, like, I was holding my breath when I got in and putting the stuff into the seats. And, you know, I got everything out of it, and they only had a couple of, like, the scooters, so it wasn't a lot of groceries. But by the time I was done, I was, like, lightheaded, ready to kind of, like, ready to puke, but I didn't because I was kind of, like, holding my breath and getting out of there. But God, they they were driving with that. They were dealing with that on a regular basis, and it's. Like, I'd get that shit for breezed or something. Yeah, you you got to see the inner workings of people's like living situations, as a cart crew person because you know you'd get into their cars and you put their stuff away. Like, dude, did you buy some for breeze here? We sell it. <laughs> Buy that shit. Tell you what, I only make minimum wage, which I'm back then was seven dollars and sixty cents. Um, but I will go oh, in and I will spend an hour's that. worth of money to give you one can of Febreze. Please use it. That shit. Oh my god. Yeah, that was, because like, when, minimum wage now is what, like $11? Yeah, back then when I started, it was $7.60. Man. But, that's, yeah, we were getting paid dog shit back then. If we were getting paid that much now, or back then rather, we'd be fucking rolling it. Like, oh, yeah, we like the getting, much we have now for... Like, if we, if we were being paid what minimum wage is now back then oh yeah we would be rolling it as a manager i would have been making close to what i'm making now if i was that many dollars above minimum wage oh yeah it was insane because that was another thing not car crew related but when the minimum wage got increased the little raises that you got yearly 
just got dissolved into the new oh, minimum yeah. wage. So yeah. when I got like a year raise um, for 40 cents an hour, I think I got. And then the minimum wage increased like to a, like a dollar more. That's what happened all the time. I, yeah. You just didn't get anything out of it. And I'm, I know that's pretty common everywhere, but it yeah. was kind of like, it was like a slap in the face. It sucks. It really yeah. sucks. Yeah. It's just retail in general, and any place that pays that low in general will do that to you. Yeah, but, like, oh, great, minimum wage went up, but my all those raises that I got just kind of gone. Yeah. It's like you're adding my raises on top of minimum wage. That's stupid. Yeah, that's, what, that's actually what happened, because uh, I was, like, making more than pretty much everybody, and then... Minimum or Walmart's minimum wage kicked in. Oh yeah, because like Walmart. our last couple of years there, they started a thing where they started. They're like, okay, minimum wage for people starting will be nine dollars, and then within the next year, it'll be up to ten dollars. Yep. And that was wild to me. Yeah, everyone just exploded. Everyone's like, yay! And I'm like, I wasn't affected. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I was already making over $9 an hour, over $10 an hour when that happened because I had already moved into electronics. So I was just thinking, great, yeah. nothing, nothing's going to come out of this. I got a 2% raise from that, which I think I calculated out back then was $0.28 cents an hour. I got nothing, but that's not surprising. Well, you started like a dollar and a half more than I had. I was making almost what department managers were making. Yeah, and I was there for like four four years by the time you joined. Because that manager experience, yo. And then they wouldn't promote me. Yeah. Well, yeah, because, you know, you're in college. I think they knew I was leaving, too. I was just kind of like, I I just did it for shits and giggles. Like, oh, there's a promotion right now available. I don't have to be out on the floor if I'm taking the test. (laughs) I'm going to go take the test. Nice. (laughs) Yeah, this is a story for another time. But yeah, um, when I when I quit, one of the things I mentioned, I was like, okay, well, I need full time. Yeah, but also, I never got promoted, even though I was consistently one of the h- hardest workers, one of the people that was there for the, you know, for the long haul, knew how to d- run like three or four different departments, and what my manager responded to me with, and I like, I wish I recorded this, but she said, you yeah, it's because you have a bachelor's degree. You could have sued them. I know. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, it's because you have a bachelor's degree. We don't. Hi- we don't. Um, we don't promote or hire management with bachelor's degrees. And I was like, okay, but there's that one guy, um, and I think I you remember who it was, him. who started as an intern, and he's an assistant manager, and he went to college. Like, he's got one. She's like, yeah, he got promoted to assistant manager before he got his degree. What the fuck? Yeah, dude. That doesn't make any sense. That's what I was told on my exit interview. They just I don't know how true people. or accurate that is, but like... You should. God, I wish you recorded that. That would have been huge. That would have been like newsworthy. Yeah, it was. You would have been in the news. You would have been interviewed. <laughs> you would have been fucking. It was. It was pretty wild. When she told that to me, I was like, "Well, I'm glad I'm gone then, because everyone was telling me I was gonna be getting, you know, promoted eventually, blah blah blah." But now this assistant manager that I respect told me in my exit interview that was never gonna happen. They were just lying to you. That would have been a hell of a tale from retail if we had that audio. Just fucking Holy play f- it. That would have. That would have been something that, like, I would have had to hide from, like, the Walmart ninjas while they tried to assassinate me or something. I don't know, man. No, they'd be incompetent because they wouldn't have degrees. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) It's like a bunch of, like, dead ninjas outside your house. What the fuck happened? Well, this one accidentally blow darted this one. (laughs) This guy threw his throwing star at his window and it bounced back and hit him in the eye. Yeah, because, you know, our our store manager didn't even have a college degree. But they all went to, like... I thought she did. I thought that was, like, her story. She got the degree... She got a wall. She, she went. Was... She went through like Walmart training, and maybe they got, they paid for her to go through college while she was like in the training. Um, but she didn't have one leading up to it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, she did this like inspirational story about her going from associate to manager, and she's like, "Even you can do that." Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. Fucking dumb. Um, yeah, we sidetracked a little bit from cart crew. There's still yeah. some stories that. I can dig up. We'll have to dive in to all that bullshit on a later date, but let's continue with the cart crew. Yeah, so touched on the extreme heat and... What about the, winter? Because we talk about extreme heat, but like... Well, we don't really get extreme colds here. That's true. But the one thing that winter brought that also uh, monsoon season, for those of you who don't oh, know, yeah. uh, monsoon season is a period of time where we get 
like short bursts of heavy rain. Yeah. Because you know you joke, haha, Arizona don't know what rain is, but there we would get these like little bursts, and we do it every year. It's like, for, like two or three weeks of just rain. A couple months actually. Just on is and it off. months? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. It just it's like feels from like... August to September, something like that. We become Seattle for a couple months. Yeah, where it could be clear one minute, and then it'll be pouring rain You're and right, thunderstorms for five minutes. And then it just clears up. Like, it's really bipolar weather. And so that, and then during winter when we get a little bit more consistent light rain, um, one of the most annoying things, I hated it more than the heat, really, was dealing with the water that pools up on the ground in the asphalt because we don't really need drainage systems because we don't get rain that often. And wet socks. Oh, so that's like, like how you get pneumonia. Yeah, so I'd be working, and even if it had rained earlier in the day and it's not raining on me, like the the water just kind of pools in areas and it just absorbs through your shoes because I didn't have you know like the best like waterproof well, they, shoes they like were fucking I had tennis shoes yeah yeah um but yeah so like I would get like wet socks and so what I ended up having to do after you know like a couple times a couple weeks of doing this on and off it's like okay. I need to have an extra pair of socks in my car for when I get off work because it's the most uncomfortable feeling and there's no way to rectify it. Wet socks it. suck. Yeah, because you, then you just work in them and it's like, it, it feels gross, you're uncomfortable, and it's just like that for hours, and you know you can't fix it because... They're just going to get wet again. Yeah, as soon as you swap out swap out socks for new ones, they're going to get wet again. Got to get those. You should have gotten, like, rainproof shoes. They get that spray you can put on your shoes and make them hydrophobic. Was it was that out there like seven years ago? Yeah, it was like a long time ago. Oh, okay. Let me pull up my seven dollar and sixty cent paycheck and spend three hours worth of my money to do that. And probably more than that. Oh God, that shit was probably expensive. <laughs> I have no idea. I just remember seeing it on TV. Dude, I wish Flex uh, Flex Seal. <laughs> you just have Flex Seal shoes. <laughs> you could have used the liquid Flex Seal in your shoes, dude. Right? You could have painted it all over your shoes. Yeah, so that was that was one of the annoying things because horrible drainage system. Yeah, that horrible. Even our roads just like well, I you think... know, there's no sewer system in Tucson. What? There's no sewer system in Tucson. Where does it all go? They um, route it using the road system. So, like, if you notice, this is a sidebar. What? But if you notice, like driving near a university, how all the water pools on the sides of the road and not in the center. That's intentional. They have that go down and follow a path to, to drain out into the desert in a special way. Why don't they just have storm drains where it normally floods? Because of caliche. And What's caliche? Like, almost like cement rock. Mm. Very difficult to get through. Like, look it up. Some people actually don't like calling it caliche anymore because they think it's a bad term. But it's like the uni- Yeah, like, I think it's something like a Native American term. I don't know. Everything's a bad term. But it's term. it's a pretty universal, up to this point, term for, like, cement rock, basically. And so there's caliche, and then there's, like, this, like, permeable um, bedrock layer underneath us that holds on to a giant aquifer of water. Is that where we get most of our water? Um, we, it's a mix of that and the uh, cap system. Yeah. So, like, Tucson itself, though, has 155 years worth of water that we could just be like depend like self-dependent if the cap ever went dry hmm yeah what was the water supply that the airport poisoned oh that's the same stuff <laughs> so if you also also look up on am i drinking that no because everything's treated because i know uh south tucson was having that problem oh south had uh they had a bunch of people getting cancer. Well, that's probably because they're a different city. South Tucson is a different city than Tucson. Oh. Yeah. So they were drinking... They were drinking... Like they have a different like, mayor and everything. They had all these, like... Yeah, PCE and TCE in the water as a result of Davis Monthan Air Force Base. You can look it up on Google. It's public knowledge. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> um, awful. There's they a big just, map of just, like, just, contaminated water. Because back in the, what, the Second pretty... World War, um, there was no understanding of what chemicals did to the, the ground to us etc cetera, etc cetera. so it was more you know, recent than that that they did this well they were just kind of washing the fuel from the tarmac on under the ground well yeah and they it, were but the like the big wars and like was it i thought it was world war Two that was the big culprit for it 
I don't know. I just remember either it was way. Like... But yeah, they they just it was before regulations because like the Haswapper program got in, instigated in like the eighties, early eighties, eighty three or something like that, and this was predating that. Mm. And so it's like a bunch of just like solvents and jet fuel into the groundwater. But that's not but all that gets, all all that gets treated that's if you have a proper now. government. Do we have a proper government? Well, yeah. Okay. In terms of water, yeah. We're not Michigan. <laughs> that's good. Well, yeah, Michigan's a whole other story. Michigan's problems with is with their pipes. Yeah, that's Why lead. are we talking about that in this? <laughs> I don't know. This is what happens. We just kind of go off track and now we're talking about Flint, Michigan. Yeah, the, let's real quick since you know the problem. What's up with Flint, Michigan? Do you guys remember Flint, Michigan? This is the sad thing. I have to like say, do you remember? Yeah, they they're still, still don't, having. They still don't have clean water. They don't have clean water in and Flint, Michigan. F- my understanding, and I, I could be wrong. So before I get flamed in the YouTube comments, um, was that a lot of the lead poisoning coming through the um, water system was because of the piping system. Yeah, degrading. That's what, I heard. that's what I heard. And so it's more than just dealing with treatment it's of the, the water entire infrastructure they have to fix right it's, it's not so much money so like what we have with the tucson water pro- problem is that it can get treated because it's coming from the ground mm-hmm. whereas flint michigan everything that's getting treated is then going, going through, through the through pipes the which has the problem itself yeah. and so getting it into your home by the time it gets through the pipes from this facility to your home that's the issue what a nightmare like can you imagine? could be wrong don't hate me. I'm pretty damn sure you're correct because I know what's really messed up is like a lot of those people. Like you're like, well, why don't you just move? You can't. Who's gonna buy your house? Yeah, Who's the property gonna... value is like plummeted. It's probably zero dollars for your house. Nobody wants to buy a house in Flint, Michigan. Nobody's moving to Flint, Michigan, because they they know what are the realtor gonna say? Well, you know, it's a nice property. It's got this tree. There's the no way, fresh water. Yeah. You you have to buy water bottles. You can't take showers. You can't shower in it because you can't lead drink absorbs it. through the skin. Does lead? Absorb well, actually, it? no, does it doesn't. Lead, lead, doesn't. lead doesn't absorb mercury through the skin. Does. But yeah, mercury does. Is there mercury in it too? I don't know about that. Double jeopardy. But if you are to get the lead into like the lead water while you're taking a shower into an open wound, oh, or like into yeah. your eyes or into your mouth and your nose, it's probably not good for your pores either. Yeah, because so you have a lifetime exposure limit to lead. You never leave your body? Well, it does very, very slowly is the problem. Mm. And the thing is also, lead um, can lower your IQ and it can mess with your brain. And So if you work at a lead mine, even as like a geologist that's not working directly with it, you have a limited number of years that you're allowed to work there. Wow. And then you're gone and you can't work in lead mines anymore. I, w- I don't would, remember the years. Who the but... fuck would work in a lead mine? Not me. I would never work in a lead mine. This poisonous metal. Well, yeah, the thing is, work in, like a mercury we mine. It. Yeah, we need it. Yeah, but they need like robots to do it, not people. Well, that's the future, but for now, we need it. That's... Nothing we can do. Man. <laughs> Shit's wild, man. What a weird tangent we went on. Yeah, sorry about that, but cart crew. But in part two, we'll talk more about cart crew. So I hope you guys enjoyed us talking about Flint, Michigan, lead <laughs> mines, and stuff that has nothing to... D- I don't remember how we got there. Uh, we talked oh, about water, drainage, the drainage system from drainage the, the Walmart parking lot and the drainage system in Tucson in general. And how our roads flood all the time and how it's like it takes another 20 minutes to get home because all the roads flood. Because But it's no... intentional, which is the wild it's thing. It's terrible. Every road around here closes. Yeah. Like, I have to take all, like, all these crazy-ass routes. One day it took me an hour to get home because it was raining. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed part one. Check out for part two. That will be coming out on Thursday. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. See you guys. See you.